This is going to be a divine feminine energy check-in. So, um, just like I did one for the divine masculine energy fields, right? For those of you that are in the twin flame journey actively, that the if you watch the DM video that I did, it was connecting to your divine masculine's energy and what he is going through right now on his journey. So this is going to be a divine feminine energy check-in um, so that you can kind of take a peek into what the divine feminine is going through right now on her journey and how she is feeling in the twin flame journey. This way you can be kind of in the idea and headspace of what your divine feminine is going through right now. So if you're a divine feminine, you're more than welcome to watch this and see if it's accurate and if it's what you're going through. And But this is more geared, of course, for the divine masculine that is on actively on the twin flame journey so that he can sort of understand where his divine feminine is right now in her energy field and her timeline to better understand the twin flame journey dynamic. All right, so it's Bunny here. Welcome to my sacred space of love and healing. Let's go ahead and dive right in. If you watch the Divine Masculine Energy Check-In, um, you know that I draw a pile of cards off camera without peeking at them. And I, so I have no idea we're diving into this together. <laughs> so um, I have all the cards picked and we always start with the tarot. I have seven tarot cards and I will let you know what deck we're using as we go along. Let's dive right in. Wow, the first card is the lovers. <laughs> so the divine feminine is feeling very sensual, very much in tune with her sexual Shakti energy. And, you know, her heart is in full bloom and blossom. She is definitely feeling very open and receptive. Um, she's very feeling very smitten. Like the whole Cupid up here keeps... Um, popping out it's like she feels very much in love right now with her divine masculine counterpart and she's receiving a lot of crown chakra downloads you know there's the the full pink um chakra blossom so it's a very beautiful energy she's also in this space of making a decision as to whether or not she wants to stay open to this connection with her divine masculine or if she wants to sort of get out and date other people in the real world. Because, you know, if, if first of all, you should never, ever, ever, ever put your life on hold for anyone, ever, <laughs> even if you're on the twin flame journey, um, you know, I know that a lot of divine feminines sometimes feel the need to do this and to go into hermit mode, but it's really not good for you because this journey is about learning and growing and it's about discovering the deepest aspects of yourself and what you would like in a divine partnership. Now, there's no way to really discover that without sort of being out in the dating pool, right? And if your divine masculine is not talking to you, how in the world can you dive deep into these um, intimacy issues if you are alone? <laughs> I mean, yes, there's ways to do it, to do the shadow work alone. Don't get me wrong. But I think the greatest um, lessons you will learn as far as intimacy goes is by learning them in the actual real world, you know, with your... Um, by testing the waters in the real world with, you know, being intimate with other people. Now, I'm not saying to go out and get on every dating app and to test intimacy, you know, like that. I'm not saying go out and, you know, this is not your free pass to go out on every dating app and get on Tinder and to just be sexually liberated with everyone, right? So intimacy is, there's different, di different definitions of intimacy. And, 
you know, it's not just sexual intimacy, but this is about being able to be with an, with um, another person and to connect on a deep level, right? Whether that's through physical intimacy, which yes, of course, there is physical intimacy, right? Which can create intimacy, but there's also different levels of intimacy. There's, you know, emotional intimacy where you spend time getting to know each other or there's intimacy where, you know, you share parts of each other and aspects of each other and dreams and hopes. And there that also could create intimacy. There's ways to have intimacy with physical touch without actually um, having sex with someone, right? So these are all different aspects of intimacy. There is, you know, joint meditations you can do together. There's hand holding. There's eye gazing. Those are all forms of intimacy which I feel like the Divine Feminine is exploring with other partners right now. Maybe even same-sex partners. All right. Some, but not all. We have Princess of Cups. So yes, the Divine Feminine is definitely feeling open and receptive. Um, there is this sense of like, of excitement with the Princess of Cups. There's this sense of like, starting again and unpeeling layers of herself that she never knew were there, right? It's a whole different onion of healing that she is exposing with her beautiful heart right now, okay? Um, the Princess of Cups is about starting new in regards to the love department. So like this butterfly that this beautiful princess is wearing on her head, she is immersed in the emotions she finally feels safe to feel her emotions and she's letting her sensual side show, which is drawing a lot of attention to the divine feminine right now. <clears throat> she is in her full power. She has become the butterfly and she's allowing her sexual energy to just flow. She's creating. I feel like she's also doing a lot of throat chakra work with a lot of the blue color um, and a lot of third eye work, right? With the beautiful indigo. Ooh. <laughs> wow, princess of discs. <laughs> So not only is the Divine Feminine open emotionally, right? She's got her cup of love and she's open and receptive to new adventures in love, right? Including adventures with her Divine Masculine if he is coming forward, right? <clears throat> now we have the Princess of Disc, which shows me that the Divine Feminine is very focused right now on her work. She's very focused on her soul purpose. She's very focused on helping humanity. So a lot of this focus has is is aimed at helping and to being of service and also focused on herself. So I don't really see a lot of her energy going towards her divine masculine masculine. <laughs> but she does it's a very strange catch 22 because while the divine masculine is never far from her thoughts and she does feel very much in love with him and enamored She's doing a lot of work on herself and she's sort of turning this love onto herself. And there, that is why um, a lot of people right now may be really um, magnetized to the divine feminine right now because she has turned that love not just onto her divine masculine, right? He's never far from her thoughts. But she has turned that love onto herself and it's made her absolutely magnetic. And she's drawing not just love and opportunities for new love, but also opportunities for money manifestations and all sorts of beautiful abundance and passion in different levels of her life. So she is creating and... You know, she is using her passion to create um, different avenues of success for herself. We have Knight of Wands. So 
energy right now for the divine feminine is moving very quickly. <laughs> she is in the process of shifting things in her favor in a very quick manner. It's like there's this feeling of she has set her sights on something and now she's just going for it. Like there's no hesitation anymore. It's like she's full in to whatever avenue she has decided to pursue. Okay, so whatever creative avenue she has opened herself up to, she is definitely going in full throttle. Okay, wow, the magician. And it's so funny, I literally just did a reel on Instagram and on Facebook, if you follow me on there, um, about how the divine feminine is the magician, right? She is the magician. She is constantly manifesting and creating her reality. And women, you know, the divine feminine is very, very good at manifesting because a lot of feminines have mastered the arts of daydreaming. <laughs> um, we have very active imaginations. We visualize, you know, love making with our partners in our head. We visualize something before we create it. We're very good at birthing things into the ether, right? We can pull souls from the ether into our womb and that is how life is created, right? Um, with our partners. And so women are naturally master manifestors. And once they can... Um, master the arts of how energy works and they understand it there's no stopping the divine feminine when she is birthing and creating her own life right there's infinite possibilities which is showing up with this infinity symbol and so right now the divine feminine is really focused on manifesting her best life she is beelined on you know no pun intended okay great pun intended <laughs> I love it. She is beelined and focusing her energy on manifesting what she wants in her reality. Okay, that's her main focus. And she's in the process of manifesting something really huge. Princess of Wands. Wow, there's a lot of princess slash page energy. So while the Divine Feminine is not really showing up in her queen energy, she is definitely making the steps to get there. So like the Divine Masculine, she's still in her page energy. She hasn't reached her full potential of power, but she's very quickly learning how to get there. She's taking all the steps. We literally had Princess of Cups. Um, okay, Princess of Cups, Princess of Dis, and Princess of Wands. So those are almost all of the elements. If we have, um, what's the last one? If we have Princess of Swords, then that shows the Divine Feminine has literally mastered every element, right? So body, mind, soul, intellect. It's insane, <laughs> right? Because disc represents like the 3D world working and, you know, Everything which keeps us earthbound, right? It's a root chakra. Wands represents the energy force. And then cups represents our emotional balance. So all we need is a sword and she would be balancing her, her intellect as well. She would be completely balanced. <laughs> so wands is, you know, moving energy and moving it quickly and going after the pursuit of our dreams, right? Right? whatever it is that we have chosen to create with and you know what what drives us our passion and um you know the things that we are passionate about so the divine feminine again is is moving energy very quickly she is very focused look her third eye is jeweled up she's focused and she's seeing you know the things that are unseen, right? Her eyes are covered, yet she is seeing things very clearly with her third eye. She's very tuned in. She's very um, tapped in, right? 
she's using her third eye to navigate this world. Whereas before, maybe, you know, she wasn't using her third eye to navigate this world. Now she trusts herself and she's completely navigating this reality with her third eye. And then we have four of discs. Wow, this is the power card. So the divine feminine right now is in the process of creating stability for herself. Now by stability, I mean um, we're, you know, building homes for ourselves. We're creating that stability for ourselves, whether that's, you know, finding homes for ourselves, whether that's creating our financial empire so that we can have that stability for ourselves. Um, and anything related to stability, so home, um, assets, things like that. And she's creating it from a, a place of sexual power and um, being very grounded with her root chakra. She's learning through visualization and manifestation techniques, practicing the law of attraction and by cleansing out her chakras. She's learning how to focus her energy to create the stability that she so desperately craves right now. Okay, so this is a ruin card, and it is Urez, and it is a bull. Now, this has something to do with a bull or an ox. It's very Taurus energy. So again, we have the energy of stability. Now, if you guys watch my Divine Masculine reading, you know that I don't know the ruins yet. So I have a little cheat sheet here. Ta-da! That was gifted to me by the very divine and beautiful Sheila McNeil. She is an amazingly beautiful soul and friend of mine. And I could not navigate this journey without her love and guidance. So... Just wanted to go ahead and say that again so she knows how much I appreciate her. I don't always tell her um, how much I appreciate her, but I do. So we have a wild ox. It's, I don't know how to pronounce this. Uruz? You, you. <laughs> Uruz. <laughs> I'm probably saying that completely wrong. So if you know how it's pronounced, please tell me. It represents a wild ox, physical strength, speed, and untamed potential. Yes. So like I said, the divine feminine is very quickly learning how to navigate and hone her energy to create her dream life. I just said this, right? It represents physical strength, speed, like I said, speed. All of these wands represent the speed of energy and untamed potential. So yes, the divine feminine is tapping into her potential to create and the potential to create is endless. She is in this creative spurt where she's just unleashing all of these ideas into the world. Wow, incredible. Great job, divine feminines. I am so proud of you. All right, one second. Okay, sorry about that, loves. I had to um, go check on my littles. All right, so the next card we have is an animal card, animal spirits card, and we have the peacock. Woo, this is such a good card. So the peacock represents vision, wisdom, beauty, and guardianship. So the many eyes in the peacock's tail feathers are associated with visions and wisdom. In Greek mythology, the bird was a symbol of the goddess Hera, who kept it in her temple as a many-eyed guard. So the peacock represents, um, you know, seeing, without seeing. The, the peacock literally represents a third eye, which is what I was just saying. Many divine feminines are seers. We can tap into future timelines, right? And so, therefore, a lot of the divine feminines right now are using that spiritual insight to be able to propel themselves into their greatest timeline, right? Um, they're also, it says, the Muslims of Java 
believe the peacock guards the gate to paradise. One second. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So, the divine feminine, um, what was I saying? Um, they believe the key, the peacock guards the gate to paradise. So, <laughs> it's really funny because I was thinking about this earlier, about how the divine masculine really cannot enter the true gates of heaven on earth without um, entering into the gates of his divine feminine. Now take that however it resonates for you. But the divine masculine cannot reach his full potential without entering into the gates of heaven, wow. which the gates of heaven are his divine feminine, right? So basically the divine feminine for him represents paradise, heaven on earth, true nirvana and bliss, right? Don't get me wrong. All of those things can be achieved without your divine counterpart. In fact, you're supposed to achieve that first before becoming into union with your counterpart. But here's the kicker. You cannot reach your true potential or your true heaven on earth without your divine counterpart. Fight me. <laughs> All right. Um, also, the peacock represents the soul. So the divine feminine right now is working on different aspects of her soul journey. She's also learning parts of her soul, right? She's putting together all the different aspects of her soul lessons. Okay, so there's a big, huge thing about karma clearing, learning um, the different soul lessons. Wow, we have number 40, radical expansion. So number four represents divine angelic guidance. And zero represents zero point or infinite potential, right? Radical expansion. Just let that sink in. Radical expansion. Holy moly. So the divine feminine is going through a huge transformation. It literally says radical expansion. Now to expand means to branch out, right? To expand something is to take something and sort of, you know, move the energy out to expand. So she's transforming in many ways. In such a radical way, it says radical expansion. You know, she is tapped into her spirit guides. And for some of you, if you are watching this and you're a divine feminine, I know, I know, I know, I know for a fact that you have strong dragon guides. You might, some of you might speak dragon light language, right? There is that dragon guide which is helping the divine feminines with the radical expansion. I definitely have a dragon spirit guide. If you go on to my Instagram, you will see a picture of my dragon spirit guide. Actually, when I was in the tub one day, I did a fruit fast and I was meditating in the water and my dragon guide decided to show himself in the picture that I took and I had no idea what in the world it was um, at all no clue and um, I ended up showing the picture to someone and she's like that looks like a dragon and you know this was someone that I really really trusted and so definitely definitely allowed me to see my dragon guide at that point so pretty crazy so yeah um let's move along because I don't want this reading to be super long we have uh, and good thing there's no, this is an erotic deck. So I wanted to make sure there was no, nothing showing so that I don't get shadow flagged on YouTube. <clears throat> so we have belief in your beauty. Oh, I love it. Number two. So two is about balance, right? Right now, the divine feminine is finally <laughs> starting to realize how beautiful and loved she is. She's starting to, um, 
she's taking her, she's starting to take her self-love to a whole new level. She's realizing her soul shine and how, you know, what is inside of our beautiful souls will radiate out and create this beautiful, sensual um, glow about her aura, right? She's learning to balance taking care of others while still taking care of her radiant self. And man, is it showing, <laughs> right? The horse represents her sexual desire. Again, it's coming up. And also her drive, right? Horses represent passion and drive. Incredible. All right, so we have secret crush. Wow. <laughs> so take that how it resonates. I'm not really quite sure how this is tying in. Um, <clears throat> only that... For some of you, it feels really strongly like your divine feminine may not have even, um, you might not even know that your divine feminine, like as far as like the 3D level, who she is. For some of you, you're going to be just discovering this right now, right? Um, you know, and for some of you, she may have even given you hints in the 3D that she has pinpointed you as her person you know everything is always revealed in divine timing especially for the twin flame journey right um but i feel like also for the divine feminine there is a lot of people being drawn in right now to her lights there is a lot of people which will be coming to the divine feminine and saying Oh, I've had a crush on you for this and this and this amount of time. So I feel like she'll have lots of options. And, and it's because of this energy she's in. She's finally realized her self-worth. Right? Wow. So a lot of the divine feminines have came from a very toxic relationship. They've learned from these toxic relationships what um, contrast is. So they've gathered all of their strengths and resources from learning from these past relationships. And I know right now a lot of divine feminines who have came from, not recently, but in the past have dealt with very toxic relationships. Some have even dealt with physical abuse. I know I have. My last relationship, I came from a very physically um, and emotionally abusive relationship. And um, I made the choice for my own um, health and emotional health and safety to get a divorce, right? And this was about, um, I don't know, about it's been about four years now maybe. Um, I can't remember. I think my divorce was final in 2019 maybe. Maybe it was the beginning of 2020. I'm not sure. Um, I, I want to say 2018, 2019, maybe. Um, but, you know, the divine feminine learned so much from those dynamics and she became stronger for it and she's able to handle herself, you know. Um, instead of setting up strong barriers, she learned to put up healthy barriers and healthy boundaries while at the same time keeping her heart chakra wide open from those relationships those toxic relationships she learns balance kitty kitty you need to stay in or out so she learns healthy boundaries and she learned balance and she's finally at this stage where she feels like her self-love is radiating out towards the world oh my goodness i am so proud of the divine feminine so we have legal matters, and this is the card of justice, right? A lot of the divine feminines may be going through some um, karmic balancing, and um, so that could show up in the form of legal matters, court, um, things like that. It could also mean a lot of the divine feminines are literally going through divorces right now, Um 
there's also this really strong sense of justice. Like it's very strong Libra energy, balancing out the scales. So the divine feminines have decided to take their karma into their own hands. And a lot of them are going in front of the karmic board and they're fighting for their karma to be balanced. They're saying, look, I put in a lot of the spiritual work and I want my karma to be balanced. I have went through this. I have went through the ringer with these toxic relationships. I've learned a lot. And now I want to move forward to find my own peace and justice, right? And so there's that beautiful energy of freeing and liberating yourself and liberating yourself from any negative and bad karma right now. A lot of you divine feminines right now are getting what you deserve, whether that's good or bad, right? But to me, you know, most of it is almost all good because you've balanced out your karma in such a huge way. And because of that, you know, your karma is evening out beautifully with a lot of masculines, whether it's your divine masculine or, you know, other divine, you know, counterparts coming in with this secret crush energy. And while I feel like the divine feminine is very much still focused on her divine masculine, she definitely has lots of options. She does not have to be alone if she doesn't want to be. You know, while her vision is pinpointed on her masculine, she can definitely branch out to other options because her soul shine is so bright. She's drawing in all sorts of beautiful moths, right? <laughs> all right, so I hope you enjoyed this reading. It got way longer than I wanted it to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read for Aquarius. Um, after this so stay tuned and if anything in this reading resonated please um, like and subscribe it's completely free to you if you would like to book a reading with me because something resonated go ahead and click on the description box below my video and click on the goldie appointment fix and that will book your reading with me i love you all so much thank you so much for being here